There we go. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to do that. Hey guys. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. It's fun to see you guys in the middle of the week. I miss seeing you on Friday. So, hey, Sharon. Hey, guys. I hope you guys are doing really well. It's um, It's been a fast week already. I can't believe it's only Tuesday. It feels like it's like Thursday or I don't know. It's only been like two days. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you had a great weekend. Hey, Patty. So we have a fun project today. It's... um. It's not a, my own design, but it's a design that I just fell in love with. And it was funny because I was making these and getting excited about them. And then I sent a picture to Carmi and she's like, oh my God, I just made those. She had had the same idea separately from me. So we felt like that meant that we needed to do this as a class. So we started coming up with samples and this is the original pattern that we found from Preciosa. Or... <laughs> left right right left and um it's just so cool it looks really neat and it had so much um potential so we're gonna do a class on it and it, this is um a really fast and easy project so i think you can make lots of them it can become lots of things um it can be earrings like i have done here or you could turn it into um like a necklace it could be you know i, I could even see it like on a ch with chain in between each section as like a long necklace um as a focal on a bracelet even so lots of cool things you can do with it and um the other things that i made i made some modifications so in the handout they talk about using a fire polish bead i actually switched that out and started using wooden beads inside and the reason i like the wooden beads is they're just a little bit lighter and I had an easier time getting them inside. And I'll show you what I mean um, when we get to that spot. The fire polish tends to be rounder in the middle and then it kind of like tapers toward the ends. It's more of an oval. This is solidly round and a bit better in my opinion. So, and then I also, yeah. And so then I, um, yes, I do. Um, when we get to that part, I'll explain, but I changed out the simple loop for a wrap loop because it was fitting better for me. So um, I think they both work, but I'll show you, um, you know, what I ran into when I got to that part of the pattern. So um, here on the mat, what I've got out are just kind of like an array of the supplies. Let me see if I can switch to the mat really quick. If it will let me do that. Hmm. Well, let's do, and there we go, perfect, okay. So um, here on the mat, what I've got is the beads, and I am using the twin beads. Those are the beads that are called out in the original pattern. And in the um, design that's on the cover, let me bring those down. I have used the following colors. I used this beige, which is called peach dyed. And this is all in the handout to you. Um, and then the color that's next in is that iris brown. And that's this color. It's just a really like bright kind of shiny opaque iris. And then I used a gold color in the center here that I'm gonna swap out. The one in the handout um, is this one in the center. It's like a topaz and it's clear. It's just a little hard to see on camera. So what I was thinking is for the demo, I'll use, this is the main and then this is the like next color and then that can be the center. This, uh, this one here. And so that'll stand out a lot better for you guys to be able to see it. And then at the end, we're just gonna put, um, I have a little bit of craft wire that I'm going to use to make the wrap loop and wooden beads will be for that step. And then at the end, I'm gonna create a really pretty knotted head pin or sorry, a decorative fancy head pin um, with some tiger's eye 10 millimeter beads. If you have any 10 millimeter bead, fire polish, gemstone, Absolutely anything will work here. And it's just a dangle, that's all it is. You just do a little head pin wrapped loop and it just hangs there. And you could also do, um, use your craft wire and make a knotted head pin if you wanted to try that too. And so that's everything there. I'm just get, gonna get started. There's a wildfire beading thread. It's uh, our usual go-to when I'm using that. And so let me just lay out colors really quick and move this over before I lose it. So that'll be kind of like the middle color. 
Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey. Um, just I'm monitoring, uh, letting a couple people in. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, will you remind everyone the difference between twin beads and um, super duos? Yes, yeah, let me show the difference there. I'll bring them up close so you can see better. So a super duo bead, let me grab some of those from behind me here. Uh, a super duo bead tends to be a little bigger. It has a tapered shape. So it kind of, it's not a round shape. It has kind of like somebody pinched the top and pinched the bottom. And a twin bead is a little bit smaller and it's round. It also has a pretty reliably larger hole diameter. Most of the ones that I've looked at have been much larger than the Super Duo, which is great for thread passes. You can get thread passes through a little easier. And you know how when you've worked with Super Duos a lot and they're kind of, they nestle in a V-shape next to each other. And it can be really tough later to come back through and make another pass with a needle. It's easier with twin beads than with Super Duo. So that's a, another great advantage. And then there's the colors. Um, the colors in these beads, they are often, there's a match in the Czech seed bead lines that you can find. Like for example, this one, let me find the match to that really quick. So I just thought that was kind of cool. I know it's a little hard to see um, here on what I'm doing here, but if you look at it, there's just one example of how closely they match in color. So if you hunt around, um, you'll find that there's a lot of variety there that you can you can use to create some really cool like spins on your designs. They're also um, they work with a lot of super duo patterns and vice versa. A lot of twin patterns will work with super duos, so don't be afraid to change that up if that's what you have and you want to give that a go. I think there's always that possibility that it'll work. So it'll look a little different, right? But in the end, it'll probably still pull together the same way. So. Yeah. Um, so for your thread, in their handout, I didn't recall seeing anywhere where they said how much thread to cut. And I wasn't sure either, but I've been doing my like kind of half wingspan, which is for me like 36 inches or so. And I found that to be okay most for, for most of the pattern. In fact, it's probably a little extra. The only exception being the first time I tried it, I stitched way more than a repeat of the center repeat has 10 rows and I, I did more sent to this pre long too, but I lost count and then I just kept going. <laughs> so that one, I was a little short on thread by the time I got to the end, but if you follow the pattern, 36 inches, is going to be plenty. And a size 12 beading needles, what I'm using here, you could use a 10. I didn't have any trouble getting the needle downstairs through and I don't even know what size I was using there. I think it was a 10, but there's a 12 here. I know that one's a 12. And so here's the pattern. And they're talking about how, I mean, you guys will recognize we do these all the time, these little flowers that start. And so that's just step one. And so we're just gonna pick up five of the twin beads in one color and just go in a circle. Now I am gonna show a pattern. And in this one, um, this is the instructions that they created. They're showing these in just one solid color, which has some flash to it. So that's a really neat look too. And if you're trying this pattern for the first time and you don't wanna worry about the pattern, like the uh, um, making it look like this, you could just do a solid. A solid color is a great way to learn the pattern and it looks wonderful. But on the back, they have these two patterns and they don't exactly tell you row for row, which bead to pick up. So I tried to do that in our handout for each of these. And in this one, you know, it's basically just the same color in the beginning and then you start creating this diamond shape. And I felt like it was kind of intuitive even as you're stitching, but I did provide a row by row. And then over here, this one's really easy. You just alternate, you start with a solid color. And then from there, the first row, the one you're exiting, you string that color and you keep going around alternating depending on what direction you're going. You're either adding the color you're coming out of or adding the color you're going into. And so, I explained that in the back too. And then the idea to use those round jerks is here, which I also thought was really cool. But we'll do this one today um, for this for class. And then if anyone has any questions about the other pattern, I can certainly talk to it. And maybe we'll have time, who knows, let's see. So let's start with those five. There's three, four. 
So I've just got five twin beads here. I'm gonna go around. And I'm just going back through all of those beads again. And a little bit of a tail, not much. All I'm gonna do with the tail later is just weave it in and tie it off. And then I'm gonna go back through the first couple beads so I can tighten down my, my shape there. So you should have like a cute little flower shape going. And I do like to reinforce these stitches. I'll go around one more time and I'll just pass where my tail is. Okay, one more through here. Okay, so there's a reinforced pass and look how it just pops. That extra pass does something for the design that I feel like it's really good. Um, and then go ahead and bring the working side of your thread. We've been working in just one of the holes. We're gonna step up through the top hole here. And so if you're working with um, the handout, I wanted to show that I did write it out for you so you can follow along if you want. And I really might be out and you need something, Carmi? Is that you? So I just laid them out as A, B, and C. So here's A and B and C. But you can do um, any combination. I think we might be able to, let me just do a here. And because of are completely taking the cause of rising prices out of the hands, not with responsibility. So our sound is coming from Miranda here there. Can you go on mute? There we go, perfect. <laughs> Thanks guys. I wasn't able to do the mute from here. Got it, okay. Cool. Um, so I've got um, the five that we started with. And then all I did is I did a little step up. So the step up is where you just, you were working on the inside hole and then just kind of stepped up and went through the outside hole. And now I'm gonna go ahead and use the same color. So two beads, you wanna pick up two of the twin beads and you wanna just go through the top hole and the next, so we're, we're going around, right? And we're just gonna go through the open holes now. We've stepped up to working in those open outside holes. And so you'll start to get a little shape that looks like that. And it's not gonna form a tube for a little bit. So don't worry about the tube just yet. Just keep going, going around. I think the tube shape comes on after like the fourth row. And this is row number two here that we're doing. And so I'm just gonna go all the way around. When I went through the bead here, I'm gonna reinforce it because it's pretty loose. See how it's kind of just wobbly. So I, I actually go through, at least in these first three rows, you may not need to do it every row, but on these first couple, maybe the first three or four, especially when it starts to form its shape, an extra little trip around helps. And the tail being left in place actually helps me know that I made it around one time. Okay. And so once you get to where you're, so here's my tail thread. So I know I've passed it. So what I'm gonna do from here is, and I, I, I put in the notes here to explain just in case anyone gets confused about where to step up, it kind of doesn't matter just from wherever you are, you're gonna start with your A and B and A um, in between every twin, we're gonna just alternate. So looking over at the last one here, 
it kind of doesn't matter. So you can see where we've got the five that started it. And then you've got the two we just added. We've been going around. I kind of just by default put my A in between um, those. So not in the center of the V, but in between each of the Vs. So if you consider that this is the V here, right? That's our V. By default, I was putting my A bead here, but I actually don't think it matters too much. Like you could start your A bead here and start your B bead here. So don't worry too much about that. But if you wanna do it exactly like we did here, let's go ahead and try to put our A in between the Vs and our B in the center of the Vs. Okay, so here I am here, I'm gonna step up and I'm exiting from the bottom hole of the center of one of the Vs. So I'm gonna step up through. And again, if you're, if you're just doing a solid one, don't worry about the pattern, you're just solid color this whole time. But if you're doing the pattern, let's go ahead with an A bead because we're working in between the V there and now B bead. And we're just gonna go around A, B, A, B. So just like that. And I'm gonna just finish that all the way around. Oops, there you go. almost there and the good news is it doesn't um increase anymore after this this is the last increase so you have the same number going all the way around from here on out and the trickiest part for me honestly was not losing count the pattern really helps with not losing count um, when you're working a solid one knowing that you have to repeat the row we're at now you'd repeat that um, so that you have a total of 10 rows so seven from where we are now. And it gets a little bit hard to remember if you're just working a solid color. And even with the spiral, I kind of had trouble keeping track of where I was, but I'll show you how to count it in a minute. Okay, so now we're starting to see a little bowl shape. Let me show you the side. It's just starting to kind of peek into the little bowl shape there. And that right there has a lot of potential and it kind of looks like our button. I don't know if you guys remember our button bracelet we did back for, um, one of our September Michael's classes, I think it was September, 2020, we did a really cute little button bracelet and it had a button that was made a lot like that. We just made a, a backing for it that capped on there. So same concept, lots of potential there. I'm gonna go ahead and step up. And from here, what you wanna do is you wanna surround each of these B beads with itself. And Going back to the pattern, it just says to put a B in between every twin. And that'll make sense if you're looking at the stitching here that we're creating this part now, all the way around. And so I'm just gonna quickly add a B in between every single one. And if you think it's loose, you can reinforce it. I have kind of stopped doing that. I didn't do that for my last round. Let's see if it, um, if I feel like it needs it on this one. There's next one. When I was reading the pattern, I don't know if you guys are ever thread curious, but I was very curious about the, the thread that all the Czech designers seem to be using in, in the Czech patterns. It's like a clear, has anyone ever worked with that clear thread? I have never tried it. At least I've never tried it that I know of. If I have, I don't, I didn't know what I was trying. But there's the finish of that round. And you know what, it's, it's a little wobbly. 
And I might just take the time to go around one more time. Because see, if you look at the side, you can really see my thread spacing. And it's getting really pronounced now. So one more trip will help. And it takes a minute, but it really helps you with, um, with tension. And it's just what I usually do. There's one more. And as far as like um, the thread color I'm using, I think the reason I like to use this color is mainly so you can see it on Zoom. But when I create samples, I, I kind of use whatever I think looks good with it. And because they have these step ups, it, it would be good to match the color that, you know, the main color that you have. Because the step ups are going to be visible mostly on the top and the bottom of this bead. You're going to see them here, right? Let's see if I can find mine so you can see it. Um, there it is. Yeah, it's not too bad, but you can really see there's my there's my step up right there. So if that was like a green or even like a gray, I bet I could get away with gray in this design. Okay, so I've gotten all the way around another time. And this look at that, so much better. So if you're having any trouble with your with your beads just kind of going all over the place, an extra trip around might make you feel better about it. And so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna kind of deliberately try to exit from one of these beads that I'm heading. Here's my step up. I'm heading back in the direction where I have these in kind of a V shape. So my bees are kind of like in a V shape here and I'm gonna put my next color C here. And in the pattern, what that looks like, I feel like you'll kind of intuit it as you're going, but um, it looks like I started with B, C, B, C. So in that case, you'd want to step up from one of the ones that's in between these. And so once again, this is a V here, and this is what is in between the V. If you end up stepping up like I did here, where you're not in between a V, but you're in the center of a V, that's where you want to put your C. So you see how it kind of, the C is going to be right here. It's hard to see on that one, but we're going to put our new color as the center of that diamond shape. So here it goes. You can kind of see what that, what that looks like there. And then I'll go back to having a B here. So if anything that's tricky, um, it's just knowing where you are when, when you step up can kind of throw off what bead you start first and you're going around. But I feel like you'll see it right away too as you're stitching and you can always just pull out that last row if it doesn't look right. And just take a look at it and compare it to um, what you thought it was going to look like and go back and pull it out, fix it. I had to do that a couple of times when I was figuring the pattern out myself. And so it's pretty easy to do. And also, I was thinking we can make our own patterns. We can make our own designs that would be really fun. Just to come up with like a flower or I don't know, all kinds of cool stuff we could do. Okay. So there's that row done. And how cool is this? It looks like a little bead cap. This I've thought a lot about doing like a little tassel coming out of the bottom. You could also use this as a cap for kumihima or as a cap for some um, cord. And so that right there is just really neat. If you were going to end this and make it a cap, instead of continuing on with, you know, a two hole bead, you just do probably like an, a size eight, I think would do it. A size eight seed bead or even a six to finish that around. So that's a great place to stop if you want to make a cap. But we're going to go ahead and finish a tube. So I'm going to step up again. And it's a little loose. Let me go through a few more. I'm going to reinforce for just a second if it's all right with you guys, because it is kind of wobbly. Almost there. 
Okay, I feel like it's a little better now. Okay, and we just did this row where we did the B, C, B, C, B, C, and then we put a C between each of those. And now we're gonna go and put a C between all of them because it's gonna be, I believe we're at this row right here, row six. So how that looks over here is the B is just continuing on. So now we've got the C's going all the way around. So we're, we're kind of at the center now, right? We're working the very center. So that, let me know if that doesn't make sense. I'll explain a little better, but um, we're gonna start creating the center of our diamond. And so in this case, it does not matter where you step up because it's the same bead going all the way around. And then from here on out, we're just copying what we've already done in reverse. And it goes a little faster. Oops, did I skip one? I skipped one. There we go. Yeah, so this is the exact middle of your tube bead. Almost all the way around. My last one. I'm just going through as many of those little twins as I can. Okay, so there's our center. And now I feel like it's it's kind of easy to see what we're gonna do for the next row, but I'm gonna explain just a little better. Um, we're gonna go through and exit from, step up from, sorry. Step up from one of the um, sides here. And it doesn't really matter if you're going into the center of a V or if you're going in between, but um, do you see where this point is where we had our B bead? Go ahead and just put a B bead on top of it and then put a C bead on top of the C bead. That's how you can remember it for this step. So depending where you step up, in my case, I'm heading into the center of one of my Vs. There's my step up right there. And I'm going to put another C. So there's that little center of a diamond shape. And now I need a B. There's the next one. And so see, it's starting to take form. And I hope I chose good colors. I'm, I'm thinking that this, uh, the dark iris might be challenging to see. but it's definitely dramatically different from the other. So that's at least good there. But maybe if I'd done our usual chalk purple, there's a chalk purple that looks just like our size eight chalk purple. That would've been really cool. I think Carmi mentioned purple too. I was like, oh, I should've, I think I have that one sitting next to me too. But yeah, it's looking really good. So far, so good, Danielle. Everyone's yeah. following along. Okay. I'm glad we didn't use purple. Oh, you're glad we did? I was just no, lamenting that I should have. Is it, does it, it's so dark, you can't see the thread. So I was getting worried. <laughs> but I think it's, um, it's really pretty from um, my, my viewpoint here. It's, I love it. I'll wear it. All right, so there's the end of that row. And I, I usually, as I finish a row, I just pass through as many of the next few holes in that line as I can as a sort of kind of pseudo reinforcement. And so from here, we're done with C beads. You don't need those anymore, but we are gonna keep using our B, B beads going around. So um, I'm gonna step up from here where I am and I'm gonna show you how I kind of And sorry guys, I think I, I don't know how to do the button there, but, um, oh, it's good enough. All right, and so I stepped up through I stepped up through the B bead in this case. And don't worry if you step up through the C bead, it's no problem. But what we're looking at here is just surrounding the top with D beads, right? Going all the way around. And really what we're doing is we're just, we're kind of mirroring this row. 
And then, so as you're sewing it, it's going to look, um, it's just going to make sense. You know, you'll, you'll see the pattern as you're going. And so don't worry too much about what the written, the written pattern is saying, unless it's helpful to you. Because for me, I honestly just kind of looked at it and thought this made sense, right? But if anyone is struggling, I was having this thought earlier today that I could, I could probably do an illustration of it flat. It's hard to illustrate something around, but if I did it flat, it might still make sense. It would be kind of like you'd see the five at the bottom just hanging out in space, right? But then I bet I could do like a little 2D illustration of it. If anyone feels like that would help them, let me know. Okay, and so there's that row. We're just going along. And I'm going to go through this next bead here. And then just want to step up through one of those beads. And so from here, just take a look at where you are just to know which one to start. We know we're going to start bringing back some A beads. But where to put the A bead is the next thing you'll want to figure out. This is one of those ones that alternates BA, BA, BA. And I'm looking over here and I'm seeing there's my A bead, right? And so I want to mirror what I'm doing here. So I'm going to put my A bead here. And if you're in a different one, like say you came up through a different, you came up through a different hole, you would just know if you were here, well, I'm going to add my next bead, right? It would, uh, it would kind of match what you've done on the other side. So let's take a look and see. So let me know if that made sense, because um, I know it can be really hard if you didn't step up in the same place as I did to follow that word chart. And I was a little worried about that. So just let me know if that's, um, if that's at all confusing. And now, so I'm gonna add an A bead because I'm mirroring what I did over here. There's my A. We're just making a diamond. Our diamond's looking like that. Here's the next one. A bead. And now a B bead. And we're just gonna do that same thing all the way around. There's A. And then there's a B bead. And it's pretty loose at this stage, but I don't want to tighten it yet because we're going to do something here in a minute. We're going to add the center beads and one time I tightened it down when I was first working on it and I couldn't get the beads to fit inside. So I'm not going to tighten it too much yet. But did I do something wrong? I did. Look what I did. No. Okay. I think I just kind of lost the place where I was. Okay, let's see, where did I go wrong? That was supposed to be this bead. Okay. So I didn't put my A bead in the right place, so I'm fixing that now. You see what I mean, how it just kind of pops out at you. You'll see it when you make a mistake like I did. You'll see it right away and you can just fix it right there in that moment. If not, then it has character and it's still awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and see if I fix it. Okay, yeah, so I got that right. So I'm going to stop here for one minute. And I'm going to go ahead and start getting ready the other things. Now, I wanted to point out where I'm straying a little bit from their pattern. So um, 
So we just did our BA, BA, BA. And the next thing is to put an A between every B. And then the way we're going to close it up is we're going to put, you know, skipping a bead. So in their pattern, they have us going all the way to the part where you're skipping the bead and then putting the bead in, but I had a really hard time getting my bead to fit at that step. So I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm going to show you what they did, and then I'm going to show you what I did, and you can choose which one works for you because there's, there's a trade-off. One is um, you can keep it really loose right now and have to go back and reinforce and be able to get your bead in, or you can um, put your bead in now, but you're going to have to do some stitching with a head pin hanging out and your, your thread's gonna have to move around that head pin. So whichever way works for you, um, I'm gonna do a quick test just to see how my beads fit. And I'm using just some regular wood beads. I showed these earlier, but I'm using a 10 millimeter round wooden bead. You really can use any bead you want. The only sad part is that the bead will never be seen really. But you see, depending on your bead, there's a lot of variation in wooden beads and sometimes I can get them in and sometimes I can't. Like that one's a little big. So I might switch it for another one. So you'll, you wanna play with that at this step. And this is the one, see that's gonna be fine. So I'm not as worried about that one. So we'll go with that one. So I'm gonna get some craft wire. And I'm using, I think I'm using like 22 gauge or something like that. Any 22 gauge craft wire, German style wire, anything at work. And you're welcome to just use a head pin. You could just use a regular head pin, but I wanted something softer. It was just easier for me to work around with softer ones. So I'm gonna do a quick wrap loop. These are my round nose pliers. And I just cut, I didn't even really worry about how much I cut. I think it's about five inches or so. It's way more than I'm gonna need, but just being extra. And I'm gonna bring about, let's see, that's about a, an inch and a half down from the top. And then just make a loop. So fold it forward. And then go like that. Bring it up and around. Go like that. And so you have a great little loop there. And I'm gonna grab a pair of just regular old chain nose pliers. And I'm gonna form a loop. On the edge of my loop. And I'm going to grab another pair of chain nose pliers and I'm going to just hold this side with my left hand and use my pointy chain nose to flatten my tail down a little bit. Okay. So once you've got your wrapped loop made, go ahead and bring it down to the center. And let's get two wooden beads, two 10 millimeter wooden beads. And just any wooden bead you have is great. Put those down in there. There's one, and two. Okay, and so that's all we're gonna need to do for now. And it is kind of a pain because you have to hold it while you're stitching or it just flies out. You could also bend it. And I did that on one of mine, but my thread was getting in the way. So it's, uh, apologies for this, this one part. It's going to be a little bit, um, you know, kind of nerve wracking, but we only have to do this for, um, for two rows. So we're okay. All right. So we're going to do all A beads now. We don't need our B beads anymore, but we're mirroring this row now, this one right here. It's the one that has the two beads, the two beads in between each of the five. But for our purposes here, it's going to look like this. It's going to be an A bead in between every single bead. With the added inconvenience of dodging our wrapped loop wire there. Danielle, I want to let you know that um, I, I did the pattern um, when we were both talking about the same pattern. And I did not put the bees, the beads in the center. Oh, okay. Um, because I didn't have any 10 millimeter beads where I was working. Um, and I made a beautiful bead, but it collapses all the time. So oh. I would urge anybody watching not to skip this step because you'll just have this really wonderful bead 
beaded bead that um, squishes. Yeah, and I was really torn about it myself because I don't like to hide my pretty beads inside. <laughs> I couldn't find a bead that I wanted to like never be seen, right? Sandy was asking about tension and I didn't want to interrupt you. And you oh, kind of asking. answered, Sandy, um, you answered the question as you were going, you're not making it, you didn't make it so tight that you couldn't get those wood beads in, right? Not at that step, no. But now I'm being a little tighter about it. Now that I've got the bead in there and I've got the, the pin where I need it to be, now I'm starting to pull a little tighter because this is this next row is our last row. And so it's just starting to, it's just starting to come down, right? And so in their pattern, they show, I'm trying to figure out if their, their visual is good. They don't really show closing it up. But the way to close it up, so we just did an A between every twin bead. And now we're going to put an A and then we're going to go through two twins. So if you add one A, and then go through two A, add one A, go through two A. And that's gonna create the little star at the top, the little five. And the good news is we're not having to worry about the colors anymore. So just step up anywhere that you'd like once you've got it reinforced and you're feeling good about the tension there. So I'm gonna step up through here. And there's one more thing you could think about if you really wanted to, it doesn't really matter. But what I noticed is that, um, my V's were kind of centered here. And so I did the same thing down here where the one that I skipped uh, was the one that would bring my V's together. But it's a knit and it doesn't matter. If you wanna do that, just go ahead and put your A and then go through two twins. And you can see where see the diamond comes down at the same point but it's actually um, not super noticeable unless you're looking for it. So I didn't feel like it was really um, something I needed to include in the written pattern, but if you like this idea, then... and if you can't even see it, then don't worry about it because <laughs> it's not something that everyone would even notice. Um, so I'm gonna keep going around. And there you go. Okay. So all we did was we, we would add an A and then we'd go through two. And then we'd add an A and go through two A's and then add an A and go through two and just keep going around. And once you get to this spot, if you feel like you wanna reinforce that one more time, go for it. I think I'm gonna go through at least a few for me because it feels like it needs it, but not too much. It can end up being tighter than your top. Um, that's one thing to say about tension. You don't wanna make it too crazy or it might actually look more tight on the bottom than the top. And so I'm going to make sure I'm exiting from one of my beads that has a top hole, right? So one of these, do a step up. It doesn't matter which one, just whichever one you end up at. And now we're just going to go through all the beads at the top, I'm not adding any new ones, just going through them all to bring them into that little five shaped flower at the top. And this one, you'll find you're going to want to go around a bunch of times. because it's not even gonna close until you've gone twice. So I'm just going all the way around, keep going. It's so pretty, this pattern has so much potential. I wanna turn it into a bunch of things. Okay, and I feel really good about that. I think it's nice and tight. And it looks really cute. And I am going to have to straighten out. If you have one of those nylon jaw pliers, the reason I worked with the soft wire is if you're working with like a, a harder wire, it um, gets bent out of shape at this point and it's harder to straighten. But I've just come along and use some nylon jaw and just straighten them out. And so I'm going to finish this loop before I do my weaving in just to get everything out of the way. And to finish that loop, super simple. We're just going to make another wrap loop at the bottom. So there's the top of my wrap loop. One of my little tricks for doing wrap loops is I look at what my front is. So that's the front of my wrap loop right there. And I turn that to face my left hand. 
and I work my loop in that direction so my fronts are the same. And on this design, it's not really noticeable because the wraps tend to slide into the bead, but it's a habit that I've got going. So there's my loop. I'm gonna hold that. And I just made these alone. You know, I didn't put a bead on them yet. If you were using something that you couldn't open, you would need to put your, your dangle there first, but all the things I'm gonna add, I can open and add at the end. When you're doing this part where you trim your wrap loop, another advantage of doing a simple loop versus a wrap loop, um, make sure you don't cut your, cut your thread. Be really careful of that. And in the um, Preciosa pattern, they're doing a simple loop, not a wrapped. And it works fine with one exception is that um, I can't get my simple loops to sit closely. And so I was getting gaps. For, for me, it wasn't working very well. I, I'm much better with a wrap loop than a simple loop because I want it to really be precision locked, like top and bottom here, where it's not moving and wiggling. And my wrap loops, were they were moving, right? But if you're really good at the simple loops and you'd rather do that, that's what they do in the Preciosa pattern and it looks really great. So I definitely try that. And you can kind of see where my tension, I gave it kind of an egg shape where I was really tight here and not so much at the bottom. It's, a, it's not super noticeable, but I do feel like I did a better job on the other one. So definitely play with that. You'll, you'll notice as you get going, but I really went crazy here at the top, tightening that. All right, so I'm gonna weave in. So to weave in, it's super easy. A couple things you can do. Um, you can start stepping down, but if you have um, you know, any trouble getting through one of these little beads down here and you'd rather not do that, you can always do a hitch knot right up here with one of the threads that's in between your star, that'd be great. Or you can try to make it down a few rows and this do some hitch knots a little lower. There's one. I'm not gonna actually do knots myself. That's a good place you could do one, but I'm just gonna weave around. And change direction maybe one more time and then call it good. Maybe I'll turn here since there's a little bit of resistance there. And this honestly is where the twin beads really shine because I bet I would struggle to do this with a superhero, this you know, spinning around thing. And then just trim or burn that. I'm just gonna push down and pull up. So there's that side's done. Let's get rid of our other tail. I'm gonna just quickly glance and make sure I'm doing good. I'm doing good for time. Okay. And if anyone hasn't seen me do that before, I'm just flattening the end of my wildfire so that it goes through the needle a little easier. Let's weave this one in. This way. I might try to tighten it down here to see if I can make my tension look a little more uniform between my top and my bottom. Let's see if that works. It might, yeah. Yeah, no, it seems like it's coming along. How cool is that? You can actually weave through this. Um, I guarantee this would not work with a super duo. Okay. And so that made it look a little more tight at the top. So it's a really tight tube. I think I'm having a tight tension day. I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do one more. And then I'm gonna turn and trim it. I see a loose spot I'm going for. Okay, and I'm gonna trim right there. All set. And so that's probably the most complicated pattern. This other pattern was a lot easier. Honestly, all I did was I just started with the same star that we did and then I immediately switched to alternating, so. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, and the entire rest of the thing is just alternating A, B, A, and B. But depending on what direction, because you know it switches direction every time, and you'll see it as you're stitching, but as you're going into one A bead, you might add an A bead, and as you're coming out of one, you might add an A. It depends which direction. 
let me just keep going, but it's um, very visually apparent as you're stitching, you'll see it. And then when you get to the top, just same thing we did with our row 11, just finish it all with solid, um, so yeah, row 10, sorry. Row 10 is a solid A and then row 11 is you pulling it together with just the one in between. So yeah, that's all you gotta do there. And so many colors and um, just, Anyone want to see ending it and finishing putting findings? We can do that really quick. We do have some of these out. These are a 10 millimeter um, gemstone bead. I think they're like tiger's eye. And then um, I have these really beautiful ear wires that we offer at, um, at Fern John Bead that are very cool because you get a lot of them. Another color, really shiny gold. So I'm going to grab one of those. I think that's going to be my top. Then I'm going to grab one of these fancy head pins. How cool are those? And all I did was I just made a little kind of just regular wrap loop. So let's pick a pretty one. And so when I make my wrap loops above, like say a gemstone, I'll give it some air by using just the very tip of my pliers like that, bend it forward. And so you end up with something that looks like that. And then you just want to take your pliers and kind of start bringing the wire up and slide it down so you have a loop that's the size you're going for. And then I always bring the actual pliers around so that that loop is crossing. And just enough air for about two wraps there. So that's how I've always done my wraps, and I think it's a little different. I didn't realize it was different, so I started watching some of the other wire designers. But um, I was self-taught in wire, so it kind of just evolved that way. And this is a really strong temper. This is not a craft wire. This is like a, I think it's half hard. So I'm going to need some help um, from my pliers to go around. But I almost did something I don't want to do. <laughs> I forgot to attach it. That would have been sad. All right. There you go. Now I'm going to close it. There we go. That one's good. I'm going to trim that tail there. And let's get a hold of it if I can and flatten that tail down. I don't want to scratch my gemstone, so I'm going to be really gentle. These are some bent nose and they're a little thinner. So they're gonna let me get my tool in there. That's a nice wrap. I don't always like my wraps. This one I'm happy with. And I love the swirl of that bead. So just, this is just really cool. And so let's see where my front, that's the front here. So let's get our ear wire. That up. And I'm just going to put that right on that loop and close it. Yay. So there we go. There's one earring. We just have to do that again <laughs> for our second one. But how pretty is that? And you could go crazy with any kind of bead you want. You could put, like, even like I had this idea earlier when I was working. But I really liked these together. Not cute. This is the this is a purple iris. So it's a lot like our brown iris, but it's like a purple version of it. And I thought that this guy would be cool with that because he's got gold on him and there's a gold reflection. So we kind of cool fall one. And then if I really wanted to go crazy, I was trying to create on this side uh, some effect I wanted to show. I was trying to create what was like a little leaf pattern, but it ended up just looking like a blob. <laughs> you know, work in progress. But you can see I used a white fire polish bead in there. And so it shines, it like glows in there. What if, call me crazy, we put some 10 millimeter glow in the dark droops in there? I know they exist. It would glow and like for fall, you could put a dragonfly and just, that would be so cute. It'd look like a little lantern. And we have clear ones of these, like clear twin. 
So a clear twin with a shiny bead inside, like even just a shiny gold or reflective, like AB finish of some kind would, would be very pronounced in the light. So it'd be kind of cool. I was even thinking of like a silhouette. Is there some way to do kind of like a silhouette inside? I don't know, just an idea, but um, definitely play with the patterns. And if you come up with your own pattern, please share it with me. I'd love to see what other patterns are possible in this. You've got, uh, you know, 11 rows to of real estate to create a pattern with. And so there's lots of potential there. Danielle, um, I'm just noticing across the screen, uh, Jen has finished hers. Really? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm amazed anyone was able to do it while you were actually teaching it because I've been holding my breath as you went oh. row to row because I, I definitely, it, I didn't do mine in an hour. Let me put it that way. Um, wow. Pat wants to know where ever did you find the little owl? If you happen to recall. Michael's. That's it is Michael. a Michael's. I yeah, thought it was a Michael's product. Okay, great. Um, the more I look at it, I think sometimes when you do, um, when you're not following kind of that Argyle pattern, it looks a little bit like a peanut. It kind of does. Yeah. Well, this one got, um, I don't know if, if it's noticeable, but I accidentally put an extra row in it. Yeah. It looks like a peanut now. Yeah. That's why you really get this collapse in the center. Cause you can see it's collapsing in between my two beads. It's not supposed to do that. I was, oops, <laughs> but yeah. I can't um, tell Patty, did you finish yours? Are you holding it up? I, I, I can't say. I, I, I was sure. really loving the pattern. Oh no, Patty has a baby. That's just <laughs> a good Patty. Up. Hold the baby up. We'll take a look at that. If so anybody jealous. else has theirs finished, they want to put it up. Hi, oh. Baby. oh, look at him. He's sleeping. Did he sleep <laughs> through class? What a good boy. <laughs> oh, that's a good baby. Um, Danielle, as Aww. always, many, many thanks for another great class. And, um, it will the uh, recording. I'll put it um, in our Facebook group as a link, and tomorrow it'll be added to the blog post. So the recording and the PDFs will live together. And you know, I just want to say on behalf of us at John B, thank you so much, Danielle, for translating you know a really great pattern that Preciosa already wrote um, and made it maybe a little bit easier for us to follow now. Yeah, awesome. If there's ever any others that you guys spy on those websites you want us to do a spin on, we could do it. Just let me know. <laughs> well, I want to wish you guys a great rest of your week. And um, if you want to share your work with us, you know, we're in the Facebook group. That's the um, Bead Projects and PDFs from John Bead. And we've got um, hashtag John Bead. And we'll see, we'll see all your posts. All right. Have a great week and um, wishing you lots of creativity. Bye, guys. <laughs>